Yesterday, Salesforce held a massive AI-themed event, and today on the AI Breakdown, we're talking about not only the most important announcements from that, but what it says about the state of enterprise AI and AI at work. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. One of the big themes that you're starting to see emerge across the business sector is the rise of enterprise AI. This is, of course, AI that is retrofitted and designed for a workplace or professional use case. Now, you're seeing this in a couple different ways. First is that the leading companies that are driving the generative AI revolution are thinking about the business versions of their tools. Remember in late April, ChatGPT announced ChatGPT Business, which would be a subscription service both for individuals who wanted more data control as well as for enterprises who needed to manage multiple people. And that service was designed to be private by default. In other words, ChatGPT would not be training its future models on any conversations that flowed through that business use case. But then, of course, the big companies that have already dealt with all the challenges of becoming a B2B product vendor were inevitably going to include AI into their tools. Now, right at the very forefront of that has been Salesforce. And to be fair to Salesforce, their tools have in many ways been AI powered or at least partially AI powered for years. But at their Trailblazer DX developer conference in March, they made a number of different AI related announcements. First, they discussed a pilot of something they called Einstein GPT, which they called, quote, the world's first generative AI for CRM. Now, this built on an existing underlying intelligence layer they've called Einstein that has been running in Salesforce since 2016. That was more of the predictive machine learning type of variety, such as helping sales teams find the most likely next customer to buy, whereas the new generative Einstein GPT was more content-oriented, for example, helping businesses auto-generate text, pictures, and code. Clara Shi, who was then a general manager at Salesforce and who has subsequently become the CEO of AI at Salesforce, said, Think of all the emails and chats that come into service agents today. They get inundated. With Einstein GPT for service, we can auto-generate draft replies so that the agents can respond to customers much faster and they get final say. They can make any edits before they hit send. The one other big announcement from that event was the launch of a $250 million fund within Salesforce Ventures that was focused on funding generative AI startups. Fast forward to yesterday, Salesforce had a major AI-themed event in New York City, and there were a couple of big announcements. The first was that they were doubling the size of their generative AI fund from $250 million to $500 million. As part of that update, they also announced investments in Humane and Tribble, which adds to other companies like Anthropic and Cohere that are already in the portfolio. Still, the bigger announcement was the launch of AI Cloud. In some ways, this is the sort of full-fruition, non-beta version of what they had started to announce in March. As TechCrunch put it, AI Cloud means generative AI everywhere. In fact, there are nine total GPT-powered applications as part of this. There's Sales GPT, which brings personalization to text generation for emails and other communications. Service GPT to help with all the mundane tasks, such as write-ups that surround the customer service process. Marketing GPT for customizing different messages for different audience segments. Commerce GPT for tailoring different product descriptions for particular audiences. Slack GPT, which is a no-code AI automation suite for Slack. Tableau GPT, which is a little code interpreter-esque generating visualizations from natural language prompts. Flow GPT for creating workflows from natural language prompts. And finally, Apex GPT, which is their AI coding suite. Now, more interesting than just the individual tools is, I think, the way that Salesforce is positioning their enterprise AI software. There is no doubt that the operative word is trust. Their official blog post is called Salesforce announces AI cloud, bringing trusted generative AI to the enterprise. Now, of course, that implies that other generative AI from other services that aren't already living inside your organization are not to be trusted. And boy, is this a theme reinforced throughout the post. In fact, if you search trust, there are 38 uses of trust in this particular blog post. They've even announced the Einstein GPT trust layer, which basically sits between customer data and the LLMs. It's meant to ensure that there's no potential leakage and that enterprise customers can feel comfortable using AI technology even for their most proprietary and sensitive needs. In his speech, Benioff said, The idea is that when our systems, when our applications, when our platforms look at all your data and then uses machine intelligence or machine learning or deep learning, we don't look at your data. We're able to provide you those predictions and that AI capability without actually looking inside the data by just keeping it anonymous. Now, with generative AI, what we're going to be able to do is take the same technology and the same idea to create what we call a GPT trust layer. We're about to roll this out for all of our customers so they have the ability to use generative AI without sacrificing their data privacy and data security. This is critical for each and every one of our customers all over the world. Every transaction and every conversation in Salesforce begins and ends with the word trust. 
Now, I think to some extent, the place that we find ourselves and what all these announcements represent is sort of the rubber hits the road moment for AI within the enterprise, at least this generation of generative AI within the enterprise. We're now seven months deep in the post chat GPT hype. Individual employees have been experimenting with these different tools and bringing them into the workplace. And now you have this raft of companies, both startups as well as big established companies like Salesforce, that are trying to productize it and change workflows within the largest companies in the world. What happens next could be, on the one hand, the promised transformation, with AI being every bit as disruptive as everyone says it is. Or on the other end of the spectrum, it could end up being an overhyped flop, as so often happens with new technologies. And then, of course, there's the middle possibility where a lot of it is pretty disruptive and transformational, but it's not like everything changes overnight. Along those lines, one tech analyst has said that we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Dan Ives argues that AI is in its gold rush moment, but that we're closer to 1995, not 1999, as in the very, very beginnings. Still, that has not stopped money from flowing in intensely to enterprise AI-focused startups. Just in the last week or so, I've seen announcements from Contextual, which builds enterprise-focused LLMs and just launched out of stealth with $20 million in seed funding. Glean, which a couple weeks ago announced a nine-figure $100 million round and just introduced a workplace chatbot called Glean Chat. Business Focus Cohere, which announced a $270 million Series C, including a contribution from Salesforce out of that generative AI fund. And as I was preparing this video, massive consulting firm Accenture announced that it was investing $3 billion in AI to, quote, accelerate clients' reinvention. Basically, Accenture has announced that they're making a $3 billion investment over three years into their data and AI practice. That includes doubling their talent to 80,000 people, launching an AI navigator for enterprise platform, which they say can help guide AI strategy, give use cases, help with decision making and more. And they say they're going to start accelerators for data and AI readiness across 19 different industries. Paul Darty, who's the chief executive of the Accenture Technology Group, said, Over the next decade, AI will be a megatrend, transforming industries, companies, and the way we live and work as generative AI transforms 40% of all working hours. So the point of all of this is that clearly big money is being bet that the AI hype is real and that it will transform industries in ways that are perhaps unimaginable today. Interestingly, however, this comes as there is increasing chatter that AI might be overhyped, including for the enterprise. A CEO of an AI company, Binu Reddy, writes, Hot take, I've pretty much stopped using ChatGPT and Bard lately and have gone back to Google search. The results are non-reliable and or boilerplate. Even in enterprise AI, code gen and document search are the only interesting use cases. Gen AI still has a long ways to go. So friends, that is what we will be keeping our eyes on as more and more companies dive into this space. What do you think? Is enterprise AI real or is it just a land grab and a money grab? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share it. Go subscribe to the podcast and the newsletter. And until next time, peace.